In this video, I'm going to paint this picture for you. It's a sun rising over a derelict furniture warehouse in eastern Long Island. So I want to try to use this underpainting as a way of setting up this lens flare idea. So I'll make the lights lighter than the base color and the darks darker, but try to stay in the same warm key. The underpainting or priming color is done in casein, an old-fashioned paint which doesn't reactivate when it's re-wet. So that casein priming will be a good base layer for the watercolor and gouache painting I'll do over it. I'm using zinc white, azo yellow, pyrrole red, transparent orange iron oxide, Prussian blue, cobalt teal, and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Now I start to mix a tint of white with the yellow to make that sky color a little bit lighter than it is in the priming. My inspiration for this effect of light and color are the photographs you find on Instagram of the lens flare effects where the light eats through the dark forms in the scene and sets up a series of circles that are arranged on a diagonal axis from the light source. I'll start with a sky first and put some warm color approaching the white where the sun is behind the tower. I'm trying to keep it all wet together while I do this gradient. And now I can start to put in the roof of the tower. It's fairly light because it's close to the supposed sunlight source that's hidden right behind that tower. That aggressively bright sunlight and the bright sky eats through all the forms, including the utility pole that is in the sky next to the tower. That dull orange on the tower is close to the color remaining from the priming nearby. I'm trying to hold this mental image as I look at the scene. I'm getting form ideas from looking at the scene here but I'm changing the color according to this memory I have of an effect I've seen on photographs. I take a break and go across the street to get a closer look at the architecture of this Greenport Auditorium from the 1890s before the age of movies. But now it of course stores furniture, but at one time, this must have been the entrance with these lathe-turned sunburst motifs under the tower. Fish scale shingling. It's been a furniture store a pretty long time. Now I'm mixing a darker color as I get lower down and farther away from the sunlight effect. This will be some trees over on the right. And I'm using sepia, transparent orange iron oxide, and even a little blue as I get farther away from the light. It'll eventually get close to black farther away. But I'm dealing with these weird colors using a flat synthetic brush. Even though those are green leaves, I'm painting them red because they're near that hot sky. I like to have some really fine details in there, like these window crossbars. For that, I use a very thin synthetic pointed brush. There's some light reflected off that vertical window, picking up the light of the sky. And I start using some cool colors to paint the cars down here on the street. The cars are near black or navy and the vertical planes are close to black. But anywhere that the planes face upward toward the sky, it'll be picking up the light values of the sky. So I save some white for the window, which is reflecting the sky in the distance. 
and switching to a light orange color for the objects against the sky, these little insulators are on the end of the wires. I look at where the wire is coming from and where it's going. Use a long haired rigger brush. Riggers are good for thin line work. And then that long flat for painting in some of the far street details. So here's the final result, trying to get that idea of the lens flare moving through all the forms, both light and dark. Well, I've brought the painting home. I'm looking at it. It's all that orange color and the orange in the sky. It's all sort of monochromatic. And I want to get some color movement. So I've got some ultramarine blue, some sepia, and some magenta, a cool red. And I want to mix a dark color and do something that you're not supposed to do with gouache, and that's glaze over it with a wet wash. Now, I know what's going to happen. It's going to melt all the color below, but I don't care. I just want to try something crazy here. So I'm going to mix a dark color, kind of a, toward the violet range, and as long as I put the color down and don't fool with it too much, it should stay there. So it settles into the pits. I can't go back and scrub this. I gotta lay it down one time and leave it. It's sort of beating up in a weird way. But I gotta leave it. And let's let it get nice and dark over here. These far trees. It's sort of dripping down there in the middle. It's okay, I can try to fix that. I want to lighten it up as it gets toward the top of that tower. So I'll use a thinner wash, mostly water, a thin amount of pigment. So normally you can't get away with glazing and gouache because the gum arabic binder is so unstable. And that would be even true if I was working on paper, but because I have the casein priming, that offers less grip for the layer of gouache, so it dissolves very, very easily. It's very fragile. How about if I introduce some crosswalk paint in a cool gray as a contrast to all the warms up above? It should be in perspective going back. Now, I want to make the sky lighter too. It's too orangey. And if I can take some, this is casein paint. I'll mix a tint of blue and make it sort of semi-transparent, a little bit milky. Mix a little yellow as I get closer to the sun. But this way the sky isn't so orange on the outside areas. The idea is I want to save the brighter orange colors for the vicinity of the sun. I can paint fairly loosely over that utility pole because I can always come back and paint the pole over the sky. So I'll just loosely paint over this, not worry about, about the edges too much. A little bit of white, a little bit of blue. And I don't need to be very precise here. I can paint over the tops of the trees because I can come back later and paint the foliage back over the dry sky paint. This is something that you get used to doing when you work a lot in opaque water media is painting across edges. The French had an idea called the theory of sacrifices in the 19th century. And the idea is you have to sacrifice information or detail in order to get a larger moody statement. As one writer put it, nature instills sentiments in the spectator through the selective sacrifice of details in order to improve the overall effect. So what I'm sacrificing here 
are the smaller details of the windows and the architectural details of the building. Instead, to get the big silhouette with just a hint of smaller detail. Classic example of this theory of sacrifices would be the Song of the Lark by Jules Breton. And here's where the sun will be. It'll actually burn through the color of the wires too. This should be some of the hottest color, the brightest orange. And the edge could even be fairly soft. Because you know how bright it is when you look at the sun and it's just emerging from behind a building. It almost hurts to look at it. You can even soften that edge, rub it a little bit. And when that dries, I can come back with some pastel and make it even lighter. Here I've got an in-brush gradient, meaning I've got colors that are different on one side of the brush than another. It's sort of white on the right and orange on the left. If you want to learn more about in-brush gradients or gradients in general, I'll put a link in the upper right. It'll take you to the DVD and the download for my new video on gradients. Now let's go over and paint some more wires and clutter on the right hand side. As we look down the street, there's a lot of street furniture as they call it. A lot of cables, wires, leaves, trees, all breaking into the sky and overlapping the bright glow of the sky in the distance. And now that I've got the sky laid down, I can come back in and put in those wires. I'm drawing that long line with a rigger brush, the long haired brush. It's mentioned in the description below. Now put your headphones on because I want to experiment with something here. There are two microphones capturing the contact noises. You should hear this on the right. And then I'll do something in the center. This is Carbothello Pastel. Would you like to hear a whole video that's just ASMR noises, just the sound of painting and no talking? Let me know in the comments. So now we have that violet color dropping down as a contrast with the bright yellowish orange. And hopefully that makes a little bit more of a, a movement of color that's more interesting. This is a Carbothello pencil. A little highlight along that wire. And some light on the street. Some blue pastel. Gouache has enough of a matte surface that you can use uh, soft pastels or hard pastels to get interesting effects. Including these circular ghosting artifacts of the lens flare, which line up along this diagonal to the point of the sunlight just behind the tower. These are often seen as circular shapes against the dark background. Sometimes they're polygonal. And the more elements a lens has, the more of these ghosting artifacts will appear. And they happen because of internal reflections within the lens elements. Now you might ask, why put this into a painting? Because our eyes don't exactly see it that way. Just playing, just trying out this visual look that we accept as photographic and doing it as an observational sketch. And if there's one takeaway from this video, it's that 
A sketchbook can be a place for trying out crazy combinations of colors, combinations of paints, and light effects that you want to explore. It's just a playground for ideas. You can follow the links in the description for information about materials. Leave a comment or a question. If you subscribed already, thank you. And if you haven't, why not do it now? Okay, thanks for watching. You might want to check out my website or subscribe to my channel. And then here's a playlist with more good stuff and a video that continues the story. So check them out and share with your friends.